Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at the basics of sculpting. We're not going to sculpt really anything in particular, but we'll go through a lot of the tools and workflow uh, that are necessary to sculpt objects directly in Cinema 4D. Now, uh, Maxon recently bought uh, ZBrush and has added it into uh, the Maxon kind of bundle uh, with Redshift and all the Red Giant stuff. Um, and while ZBrush is amazing, uh, it also has a very steep learning curve. Um, something I've never uh, bothered to sit down and learn myself because the user interface, uh, in my opinion, is not very intuitive, very easy to pick up. Uh, thankfully, Cinema 4D sculpting tools are quite capable. And so for a lot of the, the stuff I've done, specifically uh, medical illustration, uh, it's been more than enough. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're in Cinema 4D here. The first thing we're gonna do is create an object for us to work with. Uh, I'm gonna just keep it simple with a cube. You may have noticed I like to do that with my files, nothing too crazy in case you wanna follow along. Um, so I have a cube here. Now, my sculpting will require an editable object as we'll see. So I will need to uh, make this editable at some point. From here, what we can do is switch to our sculpt layout. Uh, now we have our sculpting layers and um, a big part of how we work on the right hand side and on the left hand side, all of our brushes. Honestly, not a big fan of them being over here. Uh, would very much like for them to be uh, right here. Okay, you may notice kind of lots of things are grayed out, including the brushes and, and my layers um, panel over here. Uh, and it's because this object is not editable. If I switch back to my um, object manager, you can see it's just still a plain, um, you know, primitive cube. So I'm gonna hit C, or you can just hit make editable here. And that's when things start to change. Um, at this point, you really can start to use brushes. Um, so we'll go through quite a few of these, um, and then we can start adding layers and working with them. I wanna point out, and we'll see how to do this, but with sculpting, it's very important to work non-destructively. Just like if you're an illustrator or Photoshop or any other layer-based application, um, very important to work non-destructively in case you want to go back in case you want to make changes and we'll see how to do that. So what we're going to do is go ahead and subdivide this. Okay. And um, unlike what you may be used to, subdividing here is going to add a substantial amount of polygons as we go up in level. So just doing one subdivision really doesn't kind of change the number of polygons here. It does get our object listed and we can lock it. We can um, use it as a mask. Uh, and if this was a different layer, you could adjust the strength. Okay. What we want to do though is go another layer up or subdivide this again. And you'll see we started to smooth this out, round it. Our polygons have gone up. Um, and if I hit this just one or two more times, um, we'll start to see we end up with a sphere. So I always like to mention that uh, this is very much like adding a subdivision surface to your object. And so if you don't have the proper edges to have it hold its shape, you are going to have a bad time. Um, if we look at our lines, you will see everything is pretty equally spaced. And that also is very important when it comes to sculpting. Um, and so what I'm going to do is undo this and show you another approach. Um, if I do want this to hold its shape and I don't want to add any edges myself, and that is to come here and convert this object into a volume mesh, very much like the um, volume builder or even really just remeshing it. Um, when I do volume mesh here, and you could go to settings as well. Um, I'm going to get a bunch of segments, okay, edges. And now when I go to subdivide this, it will start to hold its shape. And what I'll typically do is go to maybe the base level or even um, level one and essentially lock it. That way, if I want to come back to my base object, undo everything I've done previously, um, all I have to do is delete the layers above it, okay? Um, now, quickly, you can subdivide more or less right? By going up here, okay, you can go down here, um, or actually to just change the levels, you use the arrows, okay? Uh, and you can only work on a layer if you are on the same level as it. So um, we'll see that here very shortly. But uh, number of polygons and the amount of memory go up very quickly. Keep this in mind with your system and how much uh, memory or RAM you have. Uh, that you know, at some point, this is going to start to slow down, uh, but you need a lot of polygons to get a lot of detail. So I'll go up one more. We can see base level three. All right, this is probably where I'll spend most of my time today. 
And now what I'm going to do is create a layer. I can add this layer. I can name it. You know, maybe I call it something like uh, details one. Okay. Once again, I could lock this and I can adjust the strength of this um, if I want to lower kind of its opacity or its effect overall. But by having a layer here, um, it allows me to control what I'm doing, go back or undo or get rid of it completely if I need to. We can also have folders. Uh, so another way we can stay organized and, and work the same way. And once again, as I mentioned, you can only work on layers if you are on the same level. So now that I'm on level two, um, I can work on my base object, but I can't work on this level or this layer because I'm not on the same level as it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my shading here, make sure I'm working on my layer. So I'll make sure to have that selected. Let's start with our brushes here. So our basic draw brush is great. Oops. Let's go ahead and reset this. Let's see, there we go. Um, starting with the basic settings here. And the two basic settings, the most common ones are going to be size and strength, where if you just kind of click and drag with the mouse, you'll see I'm pulling out different parts of this object based on my mouse stroke. Okay, and that is due to both the size and strength. So just kind of gently pulling polygons in the direction of their normal. Uh, now you can adjust the size here, okay, or the strength. Now I have this weird kind of glitch um, where it kind of hides unless I change the size directly in my perspective view, size or strength for that matter. And you can do that by holding your mouse, middle mouse button down. And if you move left and right, when you click the mouse wheel in, um, it will increase the size as you can see. If you click the mouse wheel in and move up and down, it will change the strength. So I, you'll see me doing that a little bit if I need to uh, get this to appear back. So I'd be curious to know if anybody else has this problem, if it's a Cinema 4D problem or, or just myself. Um, but yeah, can come here, pull these out. We'll come back to stamp and stencil. Um, a lot of these are pretty much the same throughout here. Um, we also have symmetry. Uh, now what I could do is once again, if I'm gonna get rid of this layer, delete it, add another one in, so we can just start over again to see the symmetry a bit better. Really, really like the non-destructive workflow here. Change the axis, whether we want it to be local or world, and then choose what axis we want to symmetry along, whether it's the X. So you can see now, as I kind of pull something out on one side, it pulls it out on the other. You could also do the Y. So now when I do something, pull it from the top as well as the bottom. So symmetry can do it, you know, all three or any combination um, as well as radial, okay? You also have modifiers which allow you to almost kind of combine uh, multiple brushes here since there is a smooth brush, a pinch brush, and an inflate brush. So that can be very handy as well. And really that's kind of it for the basic settings. I mean, yeah, there is a fall off which controls how smooth your shape ends up being. Um, whether it's smooth like this or if I kind of raise this, you can see it'll be much harsher, okay? The transition there. So that's kind of the big one. And I can always just click on load preset and choose, uh, let's see, easy ease in to reset this. So those are the big ones there, All right? Let's delete this layer by right clicking and then creating another one. Let's move on to the next brush. We got lots to go through here. Wax really almost kind of makes things look almost cloth-like, melts them, definitely um, softens things up, okay? So if you wanted to soften up some edges a little bit, round it out, very easy uh, to do this. Definitely a good way of making things look um, organic. Once again, pretty much the same options across the board in the settings, stamps, um, symmetry, stencil, modifiers, all that good stuff. Um, so really, really like this one, like I said, for kind of softening edges up, things like that. Next up, kind of the opposite, we have knife. So if you want to just kind of cut in, you can do that. One thing I actually forgot to mention um, with uh, the uh, draw tool is that you can also hold control or command to do the opposite. So for instance, um, the draw tool here is going to pull out, right? However, if you hold control or command, it will push in. And that works on a lot of our other brushes, not all of them, um, but definitely works on the knife. You can see by default, it's, wait, does it work on the knife? Maybe I'm thinking of pinch. 
let's see. So definitely knives in if you hold control or command. No, it does work. Cool. So you can see you're able to get some interesting details using this. So if you need any kind of harsh details, that can work. We also have inflate if you want to just round something out, smooth it out, right? Bubble something up, if you will. You can see that even works on my existing knife. And you do have to be careful about things crossing over with um, sculpt. You know, it's up to you to make sure that doesn't happen or it, you know, still works for whatever your purposes is, but we're able to kind of just make that larger, soften it up a bit. We have pinch here. I'm sorry, amplify, which is almost like turning up the contrast. So it's just going to pull things out that have already been pulled out. It's going to push things in that have already been pulled in. Okay, I'm going to skip repeat um, and then go to grab since grab is really, really important as it allows you to pull out sections of your mesh. So if you actually really need to change the shape of it a lot, this is the way to do it. Now, the problem with this is one, kind of grabbing this in three dimensions can be really tricky. And so I'd recommend setting your perspective view to something very much like one of your orthographic views, your front, your top, your, your right. Um, so that way you're, you're almost constraining yourself to two dimensions here. Okay, because if you just have a, a view that something like this, you could be pulling it in all three dimensions and it's hard to get exactly what you want or pull this in the direction you want. Along those same lines, you can change how the direction is working here, whether it's from the mouse, whether it's in a specific um, direction or just the normal. So if I just want to kind of pull things out in the direction they're facing, um, this is the way to do it. But if you want to, want to create horns, this is the way to do it. I should also mention that we don't add geometry when we do this, okay? We're really just kind of pulling the existing polygons there. And that can be a little bit problematic since we do want to try and keep things as equally sized as possible. And that's definitely important for doing things like stamps and stencils, um, as we'll see here. Um, relatively shortly. So um, that is kind of a, a drawback or a downside, a limitation, if you will, of Cinema 4D sculpting tools that we don't have a, a really good way of doing this. Now, I suspect we could maybe do it with our volume mesh here, uh, but we're going to lose all of our, you know, editability we've had up until this point. So um, definitely need to be careful with that. But um, still grab, very, very useful. Delete this layer, create another. All right, we also have smooth, which um, I guess I'm gonna add some, some more detail back in this really quick. Uh, smooth does what its name set implies. It's gonna smooth things out. So if you push things a bit too far, you know, one way you could do change this is just by lowering the opacity, all right, just to dial things back a little bit, or you can come in and just kind of smooth things out a little bit. And, you know, once again, probably too strong, but that's why we have our strength and come in here and just soften things up just a little bit or you know, do whatever I need to do to achieve what I'm after. So that is smooth. We also have, what is this one? Pinch now, finally, thank you, um, where it will pinch things together. So it works on existing kind of sculpt. And you can see I'm able to create creases very easily. Works quite well, actually, in conjunction with the knife to give you a very strong, um, nice crease. Uh, we also have flatten. That can be very helpful if you just want to kind of take off some of the detail. Almost reminds me of like what wax is, but like in a different approach, like more harsh of a fall off with wax. Um, you can see it's just kind of like I just smudge this. It's really what it, it reminds me of. Okay. Fill can help fill in some gaps. All right. You know, not a brush I use all that often. Um, and then last but not least, in terms of the brushes, you have scrape. So um, it can help scrape, flatten things out a bit, get rid of some of your existing detail. Once again, just to try and kind of level things off, bring them down a little bit more. Okay, you can also mask things. Uh, so for instance, if I create a mask, I can then sculpt and it will not apply to that mask. So really nice way to limit what tools are getting applied to. And then lastly, erasing. Okay, so you can erase. And if I make this big enough, you can see I can go back to my original cube here. So um, not terribly useful since I typically work with layers, but hey, in a pinch, it can definitely do the job. Now let's talk about stamps or stencils. Okay, one of the biggest gotchas when it comes to sculpting 
here is that you may be tempted to go to a stamp and click load and go, oh, uh, yeah, there's nothing here. Okay. Um, that's not entirely true. And you could load in your own image and really um, black and white images. You could even download stamps or stencils that work with ZBrush and they should work here as well. Uh, you may also come in here to your asset browser and go, oh, cool, Sculpt Brush presets. Um, I want to use some of these. Well, awesome, but this isn't how you apply them. You can't, um, despite your best effort, use these by dragging and dropping them there. Uh, so you may be wondering, okay, well, how do we do this then? And it's by clicking on this little arrow here, and you will get pretty much all those same presets we are just seeing, okay, in the asset browser. Um, I prefer the asset browser way. Uh, a little bit easier to navigate and see. But what's really nice is you can come here, say choose a, a screw. And you also, it can also be a bit tricky to tell if this is gonna be a stamp or a stencil. Um, a stamp is something you'll notice if uh, in the stamp tab here, but also uh, a stencil is gonna kind of be a overlay of our perspective view as we'll hopefully see here. But I can come here, click, and there's a screw. Click, there's a screw head. So very easy way to add some awesome detail. And if you're not seeing things quite as clear as you would like, if it's still a little fuzzy or pixelated, that is because you don't have enough geometry. So what I could do, delete this layer, select my base object, subdivide, all right, create another layer. And now you can see that's even clear. I could go um, even higher though. Go back down to my base object, subdivide, all right, and another layer. You can see this one's layer five. Now we're starting to get up there in terms of polygons and memory, so keep that in mind, but this one is even smoother than before. But really nice kind of way of adding smaller details. It does, however, require a lot of polygons. So um, I really wanted to see something like deco wood. Uh, yeah because some of these, all these work in slightly different um, ways. So I can see this is a stamp and it's, you know, I don't know what it's, oh, there it is. So it's almost like you place it on here. So maybe something like that. That's kind of nifty, all right. And then let's take a look at a stencil. Um, I think dragon skin would be a stencil. Yep, so this is what I was talking about with the overlay. Um, I do want to make sure, awesome, that the stamp is turned off, and it is. But now all of the settings in our stencil are set up, and it's going to keep the, the stencil here. It actually says stencil, so that's good. Um, looks like a lot of them do, though not all of them. Um, but the second you make a change here, that will actually go away because you'll have customized this a little bit. Not that there's anything wrong with that, all right, but just keep in mind. Keep that in mind. Oops. So as I try and change the size here, now you can see I'm able to paint that stencil over my geometry. One of the tricky things about working with stencils is kind of to make a pattern like this continuous, you know, as I rotate, um, because as I get larger or smaller, I will make that pattern larger or smaller on my geometry as well. So it can take a lot of practice to just kind of rotate, to try and keep things consistent so you can blend them. Um, that's kind of one of the downsides of stencils. All right, I'm going to clear it though. So you can see, you know, once again, just some really nice detail. You can see the size difference and the blending actually worked out, um, you know, not too bad there. Okay, so that will do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If there's anything you would like to see, please leave me uh, a note or, or comment um, down below.